Up this hour is a very, very special hour for you. We're going to talk to a gentleman who literally is unique in American history, and also our colleague and friend of so many years, Jim Mars, who is really making this program possible. Jim, are you there? I am here. Welcome. We have a gentleman online with us right now, but give us a, an, an introduction to him. One of the big stories is, is that Abraham Bolden was personally selected by President John F. Kennedy to integrate the Secret Service, which had been all white up until that point, and he specifically asked for Abraham Bolden, and Abraham became the first black Secret Service agent. That's a significant story. Now, when Bolden got into office, he immediately found out that there was a lot of laxity and, and a lot of, I don't know, shall we say, sloughing off uh, right. within the Secret Service. Right. Uh, does this all sound familiar to everybody? Just Did we little. just hear about the Secret <laughs> Service hiring hookers? Just a Columbia, little bit. You know? yeah. uh, Mr. Bolden, tell us how it came to be that uh, the John F. Kennedy selected you to integrate the Secret Service. What was it about you that caught his attention? And don't yeah, be don't well, be shy. It, it was very it was very ironic, Jeff, because uh, I came a, became a Secret Service agent in uh, October 1960 under President Eisenhower. Now President Kennedy won that election in uh, November, and he came happened to come to Chicago in mm-hmm. order to thank Mayor Daley and his his squad for. Um, getting him 8,000 votes over in Cook County here and caused him to uh, win the election, as a matter of fact. Yes. So the president was coming here on April the 28th of 1961. I was a new agent here in Chicago at that time, and the president uh, came to um, McCormick Place, and they had a big banquet there, and during the assignment of the Secret Service in the Chicago office, I was given a position uh, guarding the restroom on the lower level of of uh, the uh, the restroom. Place the restroom. The <laughs> was going to be speaking. I see. Well, everybody's got to hit the restroom sooner or later. <laughs> Guard the restroom above all things. So, so it, it was kind of an out of the way place, and I, I was saying to myself, "Gee, man, I'll never see the president from down here." So after we cleared the washroom and everything, about eight thirty, the president was running late. So um, I heard all the commotion upstairs above me, and the band was striking up. Uh, Here comes the chief, and everything was going on, and the cameras were flashing. I said, gee, I can't leave this bathroom here. i I got to stand before this washroom. I want to go up those steps so bad. But then I happened to look up, and here comes President Kennedy. He's with every politician in Cook County was was with the president. You know, this was a really big affair. Yeah. And uh, he, he was coming down the steps, and he came towards me. I couldn't believe my eyes. I said, goodness, the first thing the president wanted to do when the motorcade stopped at McCormick Place was use the washroom. And there I stood, old A. Bolden. How funny. <laughs> How funny. So, as the president uh, was about to enter the washroom, he stopped right in front of me, and uh, he asked me if I was a Secret Service agent or one of Mayor Daly's finest. Apparently, the president hadn't seen any uh, black Secret Service agents guarding him uh, while he was at there at the White House. Uh-huh. So he asked me if I was a Secret Service agent or one of Mayor Daly's policemen. I told him I was a Secret Service agent. One of the other agents, Dick Jordan, who happened to be standing behind him, told him my name. Kennedy looked at me, and uh, he smiled, uh, uh, a very nice smile. And uh, uh, he asked me if I uh, knew that whether or not they had had any Negroes uh, in the, on the White House detail mm-hmm. protecting mm-hmm. the president. Mm-hmm. I told him not to my knowledge, Mr. President. And he looked at me, and he looked around at Mayor Daly and Congressman Dawson, and and uh, his eyes glittered in the lights uh, overhead. He says, "Would you like to be the first? I say, "Yes, sir, Mister. Yes, sir, Mister President." And the uh, President Kennedy said, "I'll be looking forward to seeing you soon in Washington D.C." And we shook hands. He went into the bathroom. Uh, came, and he came out later on, and uh, we shook hands again, and he walked back up the steps. And I'm telling you, that was one memorial time in my life. Uh, 
I'll never forget that day as long as I live. Well, I, if I might say, uh, Abraham, you just you just kind of made the hair on the back of my neck stand up. You described a man who was almost transcendent in his his charisma, his sincerity, and you described something that was so human and so beautiful that I'll never forget that description you just gave me. Thank you for that. Thank you. Uh, Jim, so how, any, any, how long was it before you got orders to go to the White House? Well, it only took a couple of months. As a matter right. of fact, uh, I had been doing a little research on uh, protecting the president and talking to some of the agents around the Chicago office uh, that had been on that detail before, trying to get some understanding as to uh, what I would be up against and things like that. And, and you know, Jim, the thing about it is that I heard these rumors about the drinking parties and things like that on the White House detail before I left and went there in uh, June of uh, 1961. Mm -hmm. uh, some of the agents who were in the Chicago office were saying that there were a bunch of playboys, there were a bunch of drunks, and that they had their reputation of drinking and partying a lot. And I uh, finally, I was saying to myself that I'll get the opportunity to see if these things are true. Because I just couldn't, it was unbelievable some of the things that uh, I heard you, you uh, hearing, about yeah. the conduct of the mm -hmm. Secret Service agents. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So when I arrived in on June the 6th of 1961, I uh, was immediately assigned to the White House protecting the President of the United States. Mm -hmm. And uh, so... As I uh, began to uh, take up my assignments, one thing that uh, that stood out is that uh, several other agents who were on the White House detail were very racist, and they did not like President Kennedy. They were saying things like he's destroying the country, and uh, I heard some of them refer to the president as a, a, a N-I-G-G-E-R lover and uh, that he was destroying the country with his uh, push for civil rights and uh, such things as that. And it, it shocked me, as a matter of fact, the racism that was uh, surrounding the president. Uh, that's, and I uh, saw that's, this as a danger. That's a surprise to me. And, uh, yes, I can see how you would see it as a danger as well. This is a mindset that I would never have guessed the president would have allowed around him uh, in his Secret Service protection entourage. Did you did you see the president often when you took up your position uh, in the White House? Secret yes, Service I staff? did. As a matter of fact, one day he was coming out of one of the conferences uh, uh, with uh, some of the senators. Uh, they were coming out of the conference room there, and I was standing outside the Oval Office. And the president uh, ha happened to be standing in the office talking to his brother Robert Kennedy. Yes. When uh, Go Wild and, and Humphrey, Senator Barry Go Wild and Senator Hewitt Humphrey came out of the Oval Office and they left the uh, Oval Office door ajar. And as they exited, I reached in to close the Oval Office door and the president looked up and he saw me and he said, Mr. Bolden, and he came <laughs> walking over and we shook hands. He said, I see that you made it here. And uh, he proceeded to end booth introduced me to uh, Senator Humphrey, uh, Senator Goldwater, and Evelyn Lincoln, his secretary. And uh, when we got to Pierre Solinger, now this was very moving to me. He called Pierre Solinger over. Pierre was, was their press secretary. Yes. And he was a very avid uh, baseball fan. Uh -huh. And uh, President Kennedy said, Pierre, come over here. I want you to meet someone. Pierre came over smoking his cigar. And uh, the president said, I want you to meet Abraham Bolden. He's the Jackie Robinson of the Secret Service. <laughs> ah, what a beautiful comment. <laughs> yes, it was a beautiful comment to uh, equate me with such an icon as Jackie Robinson. Well, I looked at it as twofold. The president was telegraphing to me in so many words, let me know that, Bolden, I expect a lot of you. Uh, I understand that you've been the, the first African-American on this detail. Mm -hmm. I expect you to have the same attitude as Jackie Robinson. I'm dependent on you. 
to, to, to make this a success and not yes. get into any trouble and not become involved in too many difficulties. That's, that's the message that I received from him. Right. And that's the one that I accepted. <laughs> 